Hey gang, in this video we are going to be reviewing the farm tractor that I purchased when I bought when we bought this farm. Um, I've had it for four months now and um, I'm going to tell you the ups and downs, the ins and the outs, the pros and the cons. So let's get into it. Hope you enjoy it. I, um, I wanted to do a quick review on the uh, Mahindra tractor that I bought um, when we first moved to the property. Now, um, when I looked at this property, I came, well, we looked at it first as a family, and then I came back in the summer, and I looked around at the amount, and this place was in full bloom, and I said to my wife, I said, there is no way that, um, that we're getting this place unless I have some help the help of a tractor because I'm 50 now I work really hard as you've already seen and I, I fully realize that my body uh, can break and when it comes to farming you're moving rocks you're clearing land and uh, and so yeah it was a significant investment um, I did shop around to different brands and um, and I settled with this one which is the Mahindra um, now the amount that I've been able to achieve in three months with the help of Rosie is incredible. Um, not incredible if you if you have a machine, you're used to that, but if you were to do this by the sweat of your own brow, uh, by your own, own strength, um, for one, I would probably be at physio right now and I would have all kinds of brutal aches and pains. And second, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't get this volume done. Uh, there is no way I would be less than half um, digging up tree roots, clearing bits of land, being able to tear down the, the uh, mobile home, dig ditches for drainage. Um, the list goes on and on and on. I've used this girl every single day, bar when it's pouring rain. You know, overall, it's really impressed me. So I just want to take a few minutes to walk you through. Now, I'm not a real tech guy. I don't know all the ins and outs of this versus a Kubota. Um, I'll give you some reasoning why I chose Mahindra over Kubota. A lot of it came down to price point. Um, this, the amount of horsepower that I have here and the amount of lifting power in Kubota would probably cost me five to $10,000 more ballpark. Um, now this, this investment was um, about $45,000. Uh, brand new um, and I did get the backhoe attachment <laughs> Got a little friend here. So I, I did get the backhoe attachment, which is obviously more expensive than just your plain tractor um, I got the front loader um, I got a mower as well, which is actually a bit of a regret. Uh, um, I bought the mower um, Thinking that I would be mowing this bottom field and actually I'm trying to sell it now so that was a bit of an oversight and if I were to give one tip if you're moving to a new property I would say um, uh, live on the land a little bit first before you buy attachments um, because you don't know what you need what I wished I'd bought instead of a mower was a, uh, a grappler um, so the grapple will you know allow you with forks underneath allows you to go and pick up like brush and then the top closes in and you can grab it. What I found frustrating with just the bucket is that um, you, you can't lift brush, it just falls out. You can lift dirt, you can lift gravel, but you can't lift brush. And I do have the forks, actually forks is a really good investment. I would always buy forks because you can pick up pallets, you can pick up wide things, it doesn't tip as much. I've used the forks a lot. But yeah, I looked at Kubota, really nice tractor. I think that Kubotas are built better. I think the act, the metal, the bodywork of a Kubota is probably stronger because that's why you look on Craigslist or, Fa or Facebook Marketplace, you will see um, Kubotas that are as old as time and still not rusted to pieces. Um, this metal is probably a little bit thinner. And so uh, I met some guy and he said, keep that thing meticulously clean. Um, so I have been doing that. I've been keeping it under undercover at night and I and I power wash it off when I've had some heavy use on it. Um, it is a Mitsubishi engine, a four-cylinder diesel Mitsubishi engine, which is Mitsubishi 
I believe are great. Um, Mitsubishi cars, Mitsubishi have been around for a long, long time. So I have no doubt that the mechanics of this thing are totally fine. So, okay, so it's a, it's a Mahindra 1626. Um, this was the model that I saw that had all the attachments. I drove it around the yard once. I'm like, well, it's a tractor. It does everything a tractor's supposed to do. Um, uh, it, it apparently has more lifting power than its equivalent in a Kubota, um, a little bit more juice to lift. Um, let's talk about some of the cons, and they're, they're, they're not very many. Um, one, of the, one of the cons, uh, the silly little con um, that I'm having is the, these, these levers that you have to pull up and drop down to just, just take this bucket off. This one continually uh, as I, I lift it up, I'll go back into the cab to drop it and it, it, it just goes clunk and comes back. So I have to continue to get in and out and just hold this thing up. Now it's probably an adjustment that I can make myself. Uh, I just haven't had the time uh, to do that, but I, I'm hoping that um, there's some kind of tweak that I can change that. The signals, you constantly hit these on your way in and out of the tractor. So you'll be working away and see the lights flashing away. Not a massive deal. Um, one of the big things I think they should have done on this, and I think it would have been so simple, and I really wish um, they would have, is, is you can engage the brake, and there's a, a brake, sorry, I'm changing hands here. There's a brake hold here, so when, you're, when you want it not to roll, and you put it in, there's a parking brake. When you go to drive it again, sometimes you forget that that's engaged, and there's no light on the dash, or no beep, or no nothing, so sometimes I've driven, for five minutes, 10 minutes, and think, why is it so laggy? Why is the tractor struggling? Oh, shoot, the brake's on. And then you have to press the brake and disengage it. I wish they would have put some kind of warning sign on the dashboard or something that stops you being able to use the tractor um, while the brake is engaged. The other thing that's a little bit, a little bit clunky is um, the shift between high, medium, and low. Um, it's a, it's it's a struggle to get this changed. You have to really play around with it. Sorry, I don't know if I'm showing you. You really have to play around with this and and kind of reef on it, and then it sometimes it will jump from from neutral t into the neutral position when you're trying to get it into high, medium, or low. Um, it's not very smooth. Um, you get used to it. I don't know if the Kubota is any better. What else? What else can I say that's niggly about this thing? Didn't have expectations that this was going to be some big time, you know, rip of massive tree stump out without even any effort. I didn't have, I knew this was a, a small tractor and with small tractors, you can only do so much. So um, let's talk about some of the positives and those are big. Um, overall, the power has really impressed me. Um, the backhoe, for instance, you know, I was worried that it was going to be a very slow move. Well. If you have the speeds up, the revs up, it moves pretty fast. Not as fast as a, as a, as a mini excavator. They're, those are always going to be out outperform uh, a backhoe. Um, but I've ditched hundreds of feet of ditch with this thing. I've pulled out huge rocks, like big, big rocks that are that you know would be impossible for me to move myself, and lifted them right out of a ditch. Um, and maneuvered them around. Um, there is a thumb attachment you can get with this. It's a, a stationary thumb, and it's, it's like a thousand bucks for a piece of steel, which I think is mental. Um, it would have helped every now and then when I'm picking rocks up, but there's always a way to get around that. So overall, the backhoe attachment, um, I've been really happy with. It's, it's, it's done more than I thought. Um, as you'll see, I dug some really big tree roots out um, fairly recently and yeah I had to pick away at it for 30 minutes or so and sometimes 45 for a really big one but if you're patient it will eventually get that thing out and you have to be creative you have to you know with a big excavator you can pick the whole thing up and move it this one I had to roll it and roll it and you just get creative on how to use um, the machine I mean I've used big excavators before and even those ones there's always a bigger excavator so even those I've maxed out and had to maneuver things around so overall uh, great it does you know there isn't the spin around seat option um, you have to jump in and out so when you are ditching it is kind of hard on you you're in and out and in and out sometimes I have my son in the front or my daughter 
and they will drive forward while I'm ditching. Um, so that saves me getting in and out, which is helpful. So if you have a child, put them to work. Um, so overall, the backhoe, um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the front loader, um, I have maxed it out. I've, I've lifted a pallet full of concrete blocks and it's just got it off the ground. I lifted a very, very big tree root the other day. Um, and it just got it off the ground. But overall, I've been really impressed with it. You do need, if you're picking up gravel, if you're picking up soil, you do need to put it either in the low setting or, or pick the revs up because it will bog out when it's trying to lift a, through a big pile. So you have to kind of play around with the pile a little bit so it's not, you know, lifting some massive load. Um, um, what else did it say? This one's a hydrostatic. So the forward and back um, works fantastic. Um, you know, I got this royally stuck the other day. I, I was ditching and then I, I realized the ditch wasn't steep enough. And uh, I um, what I tried to do, which was silly, I straddled the ditch and drove along it to try and dig it deeper. And the ditch gave way and the tractor sank in like this. I was actually, my heart was beating. I thought I'm going to have to go to a neighbor and get a, get a machine to pull me out. And I managed to dig my way out of it. Um, so really impressed. She hasn't, I haven't um, got her stuck to the point where I can't get her out. So um, yeah, I'm getting to the 50, I've got 60 hours on it now. So I do need to do a full service on it, which, which is a lot of fluids. That's going to take a good half a day. Uh, to, to drain the hydrostatic completely, engine oil completely. Um, <clears throat> so there is that. One other issue I, I don't like about this, this machine is the front grill, this thing. Looks beefy, but um, I came, I pushed up, I was loading up a bin uh, when I first got this. <laughs> And I, and I drove into the bin a little bit because it's easy to do um, when you're trying to drop stuff into it. And this thing just buckled back and pinched the grill, dented my brand new grill, which was a bummer. And it's actually happened a few times. So this is really weak. Um, I wish this was stronger. I'm probably gonna weld something up eventually. Um, you can see it's already buckled out of shape, but I, I'm gonna try and make something a little stronger here that doesn't give so easily. Um, because it doesn't take much pressure at all and it's deceiving. You think this thing's protecting your front of your tractor. It's not doing very much at all. So, um, all in all, very happy with it. Mahindra, I've only done 60 hours on it. I'll do another one when I've done maybe over 100. Um, it's, it's been used every single day. It performs great on these five acres. I've lifted big tree roots. I've ditched uh, big rocks, you know, a really great helper expensive to buy but not as expensive as Kubota so I had to say if you don't have the budget for Kubota Mahindra is a great option and uh, you just got to take a little bit more care with it you got to clean it you got to power wash it don't leave it out in the rain so I hope you found this helpful please subscribe